Hello everybody. This is uh, probably the largest of my trees, um, or at least tree from a, a single a single tree rather than a fusion project. And uh, it's actually a large-leaved lime, and uh, I've had it 30 years. It's gone through several incarnations. Of, I didn't really know what I was doing, and I didn't really know what I was doing with it. Um, almost gave up on it because of the strange shape uh, to the Nabari, but um, I'm glad I didn't. Uh, it was a collected seedling, and um, yeah, I've had it a goodly long time. So I'm going to move you in, um, and we'll have a look at the base of the trunk. Okay, so I'm calling it the base of the trunk rather than the Nabari because um, it certainly doesn't fit into the, the classical mould for a Nabari. Um, I actually call this tree the Sphinx because uh, well, maybe you can see it just reminds me uh, a little of the, um, the rear end of the Sphinx. With the paws coming out of the front um, and then the, the shape of the the canopy reminds me of the the headdress of the Sphinx, as it were. Um, but yeah, so it's it's got a very strong presence in the soil. Um, it's got some really interesting gnarly old roots that are hanging in there. Um, but it is by no means any kind of classical Nabari. Um, from this point, uh, less a Sphinx, more of an octopus, but. Uh, there we go. So, and obviously, rather than rising, uh, trunk rising gracefully from the Nabari, the tree has got this decided curve to it, um, rising up and splitting off in several different directions. Uh, I know it's not a not a normal traditional bonsai, but um, I'm not a normal traditional bonsai person. I won't call myself an artist, uh, bonsai enthusiast perhaps. Um, done a lot of changes to this tree over the years. It was actually the first tree um, I ever made a video about on this channel. And if you go back and I'll put the link to the playlist in the description. I've only made a couple of videos about it, um, but you'll see it was quite a bit thinner less chunky um, and all of these branches uh, were quite upright and I've bent them all down using guy wires I still have one guy wire in place um, which has given it a better look I think so we're going to move back out uh, and then we'll start tackling this top okay so I just thought I would give you uh, a glimpse that you don't often get um, and that is looking up under the tree through the branches towards the sky um, often not an easy aspect to get to with a lot of bonsai trees simply because um, of the scale but uh, yeah just thought that might be something you might appreciate seeing. How are we doing? Hmm? Need a bit of fussing. I'm doing this. We'll go out for a walk after. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so that's that's the canopy from the bottom down. Well, no, from the bottom up, I should say. My um, plan for this tree is that uh, in order to give a touch more balance, obviously this side of the canopy is going to be the wider side and I'm going to bring this side in more closely. Um, so let's begin with just working our way around 
this side and I'm just going to be shortening back to two or three pairs of leaves and um, slowly work my way round this tree isn't as ramified as I would like uh, it's quite slow in fact in uh, producing shoots um, but I'm quite pleased that the leaves have come down quite a lot in size over the years um, and it still throws out some quite large leaves like this one um, but they are coming down slowly and I am getting more more leaves that are you know size of a large coin as I say I'm going to cut more more back of this side of the tree um, just to try and bring it back in a little um, and allow this side to stretch its wings a little bit more I'm not being too fussy about uh, directional pruning particularly uh, I'll probably give this another prune back over winter if I'm not happy with anything but uh, I'm hoping this will cause a bit more ramification this year as I say although I've been training this tree for 30 years um, or more I tried training it as a a windswept and an informal upright and kind of went back to the beginning on both of those because it wasn't it just wasn't working and I didn't have the time or the energy at the you know in those early years I had a lot of enthusiasm very little knowledge there were no books no internet um, and I had a busy job and a young family and uh, I've probably said before, killed a number of trees because uh, well, I just wasn't skilled in caring for them and didn't have the time always to water them, working shifts, etc. And it's only, you know, I managed to keep this and a few others alive. Um, and I'm glad I did. But in many of the trees, uh, that was all I could say for them. And then I became semi-retired five, six years ago. And uh, I've had the luxury of time and grown-up children um, so that I could actually get out and, well, my collection has then since gone bananas. Um, I haven't been able to stop myself seed sowing and uh, taking cuttings and buying things at nurseries and oh but to have had that time when I had some of the energy <laughs> uh, but still at least I never lost the enthusiasm and that I am grateful for at the top here sticking straight up shorten those off uh, 
I'm uh, still not sure if I don't want to come back a little more on this side. Um, so better. Um, okay, so I'm going to lose a couple of leaves in here. Um, this is more about providing line of sight. Um, it will also help promote a little bit more ramification in that uh, the tree often will send out a, a new set of leaves from where I've reduced the leaf. I might even next month um, give this a complete defoliation. I haven't made up my mind on that yet. But I just want to be able to see into the heart of this tree a little more. I love these knot holes. Um, didn't point those out before, but uh, and there's a danger of a little bit of reverse taper there. But um, in nature, you see that all the time, so I'm really not going to lose too much sleep over it. But I always imagine a couple of hours to wit and to wooing in there. Okay, so keep going up top. I don't want to take too much off the top. Um, you know the crown hopes to build up uh, even higher, maybe two or three inches higher. So just don't want these long straight shoots. nipping out the terminal buds on this side are more than giving it a drastic pruning. Um, as I say, I think the tree needs to have the weight on this, the weight of the crown on this side uh, of the tree, just to give that balance with that of that trunk. Uh, if you have too much weight on this side, then the tree might look like it was going to fall over. A big old chunk down the bottom that's uh, it looks like it will never let this tree fall over. pleased with that that's um that's looking good that's brought it back a little bit under control and uh, hopefully we'll cause it to back bud profusely um, I 
couple of pieces sticking up. Um, but now I think that looks much better and uh, I think I think I probably will uh, defoliate it in June and if I do um, I will make a video of that otherwise we will come back and look at this tree uh, perhaps next winter when it's um, naked as it were and uh, you can see the branch structure better and we'll finish off with a 360 degree shot of the tree um, as you can see it sort of zooms away um, in that direction uh, but I had a long time I think it'll forever be one of my favorite trees and uh, yeah that's it for this one so thank you all for watching as always please 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 take care of yourselves stay safe